everyone and welcome back to Art a la carte and today is our watercolor 101. Now this video is going to be answering a lot of the questions that you guys have on how to add shadow to water with watercolor to a creature and how to maybe kind of get a little bit of a fur texture. So um, what I did is I recorded a picture that I did of this lion head and I did it in Time lapse, and so I'm just going to kind of go over kind of the steps that I did in this pic in this painting. So you can see I'm just beginning just to put in um, my just very light pencil marks, and you really want everything to be super light as the paint goes over it. Um, the paint's going to cover up these marks anyway, so you, but you don't want them to be too dark. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to begin to put in my first wash, my layer, and I'm actually laying in my highlight color first. So I'm picking in some really nice golden -y colors in here and I'm laying them in. It's much lighter than what the ending product is going to be, but I want to find my highlights as well. Now on the reverse side, I'm going to put in my shadow, so I'm kind of taking a cooler shade of that. A lot of times you just want to take, you think you want to just use like a gray or something but really you want just a cooler shade of the original color so you'll see it's kind of a brownish um, kind of a cool brownish color and I see I'm kind of laid those both in while while everything was still really wet so that the two the highlighted colors and the shadow colors will kind of blend together now I let it dry just a little bit because you'll see that I'm beginning to put in a second wash now of more of a golden rich colors and some darker cooler colors and it's all about layering in these layers together is the way that you're going to create your shadows with this controlling the, um, the wetness of your paper um, so that your colors don't bleed when you don't want them to like here on the nose I didn't want that to bleed out onto the fur so I waited till it was really dark or when I added the really dark area to the lips I didn't want that you know, to bleed everywhere so I made sure that was um, kind of a dry paper um, but other places um, where you want to create a gradient, you're going to want to have your paper be wet. So I bet you're asking, okay, well then how do I know where do I want to have wet and where do I want to have it dry? And that's just going to come from playing with your paints and knowing how your paints react with your paper. Um, and I know that's kind of maybe like a lame loser answer, but really it totally depends on what you're painting. Um, where you want your shadows to be and how you want it to be, how do you want it to look. I have never gone to a formal watercolor class. This is all just self-taught. And by self-taught, I just played. I played and played and I messed up a ton of paintings and I threw away a ton of paintings and until I finally got it. And so just looking at photos and trying to mimic that with your paints is really the best teacher that you can possibly get. Because I could teach you for this, you know, for an exact replica of this painting but then you only ever able to create this exact replica but by kind of showing you how I play with my colors is going to help you to then know how you can play with your colors and be able to get them to to do the things you want them to do now to create fur in this painting the, the um, kind of that look of fur you're going to use your stroke marks to help you out so you'll notice that when I'm applying shadow and shading I'm moving my brush up and down in the direction of where the fur goes so not always in the same direction sometimes it's a little bit more sideways sometimes it's you know a little bit out sometimes it's completely up and down but it mimics that fur how the fur would go and also I'm, I'm not covering up all of my highlights or filling it all with shadow I'm leaving kind of that variance so it's kind of like a, a ripple effect in there and it's going to create that kind of um, that kind of te that texture that you want when you're getting in your fur. Same thing with the ears. You'll see that when I darken in the ears, it's not all completely darked in. Um, you'll see a little, you know, wedges of, of lighter color showing through. That's going to help create that illusion that there's some fur in there, a little bit of texture. So taking your time, adding in your washes, and trying out things like here. I really wanted to get kind of a goldeny look to his his mane and so I thought well I'm just going to add just my brightest yellow I'm not going to condense it down with any other paint I'm not even going to put a lot of water to it I want it just this bold yellow and I said to myself if I do this it's either going to look really weird like he's got a really bad bleach job or it's going to look like golden sun and so at first when I did it I was like yeek it's looking really scary 
But as the paint began to settle and I began to blend it through, I began going, no, it kind of looks like sun kind of reflecting through it. It's, it's what I wanted. Now here's a trick. If you want just a dark, dark color, a dark, dark black, um, try using um, an Indian ink. So here I want to add some really, really dark shadows and I don't want it to fade too much. Sometimes if you use um, a black watercolor, it'll kind of fade out a little bit, but by using Indian ink, I'm just getting that really, really dark color. The thing to remember about using Indian ink is that once it's dried, it's there. It's not gonna pull up like watercolor. So when I do this work on the eye, after it's dried, there's no blending this, there's no um, scrubbing it up, there's no getting it to be a gradient with another color later on. It's permanent, but it's something kind of fun to play with. Well, hopefully this answered a few questions that you might have about how to shadow something or play with shadow and highlights in your watercolor paintings and kind of how to um, imitate the fur look with this. So I just encourage you to have fun, whether you paint a lion or whatever kind of animal, have fun with it and make sure to share your photo with me on Facebook or Instagram. And as always, I'll see you next time with another drawing tutorial, painting something kind of video in the future. So thank you guys so much. God bless you guys. And we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.